By the revolution of 1776, Christianity had been at home in North America for more than 150 years. Christianity arrived here in its European form, but in an environment of freedom, developed a vitality that allowed it to adapt to the ever-changing atmosphere of America. In this series, we're going to examine three personalities who were deeply influential in the spiritual formation of America. In this episode, we will consider William Penn, the Quaker reformer and founder of Pennsylvania. My name is Chris White. William Penn was from a stream of European Protestantism known as Pietism. Differing from most Puritans, Pietistic groups rejected the idea of any state and church union and emphasized individual religious experience of the heart over the emphasis on creeds and doctrines. Pietists typically were involved in social action and missionary concern as well. Just as the Puritans were connected with New England, the Pietists were dominant in the Middle Colonies. That said, the essence of the Pietistic stream in America was found in the colony called Penn's Woods, or Pennsylvania. William Penn was the son of Admiral William Penn Sr., considered to be one of England's best naval commanders. The Penn family was very well connected with the royal family, and William Penn Jr. grew up a son of privilege. Penn himself was educated at Oxford, and while there came under the religious influence of the Quakers or the Society of Friends. This was a Christian group that stressed immediate experience with God, had no official clergy, and placed authority on the conscience above the Word of God. Truth be told, Penn's relationship with the Quakers was a family embarrassment, which eventually led his father to disown him and throw him out of the house. Religious liberty in England was at an all-time low as well. In the 1670s, Parliament passed the Conventicle Act, which made membership in groups other than the Church of England an act of sedition against the Crown. Penn found himself in prison many times and wrote many short books on religious liberty, which were widely read and circulated. One of those works is called No Cross, No Crown, which is still widely regarded and read as a devotional classic. Penn, growing in popularity as a public speaker on religious toleration, and realizing this, that this was probably not going to be realized in England, approaches the king for a charter in the New World. The king grants Penn the charter partly to divest himself of a lot of Quakers who were troublesome, but also because the crown owed his family lots of money. This happens in 1681. King Charles II is the one who actually named the colony Pennsylvania. William Penn considered his colony a holy experiment where Christians of all kinds could live free of persecution and in harmony with one another. Penn also wrote a constitution for the colony which heavily influenced our future nation and in many regards was not only ahead of its time but was far superior. It allowed for freedom of religion and conscience. It allowed for equal rights for women, limited protection and taxation. It protected civil liberties. It had a humane penal code and it also accounted for Indian rights. Penn's colony was a huge success. Because of its freedom, people from all over Europe who were persecuted for their faith or tired of wars over religion flocked there. By the 1690s, there were a flood of immigrants from Germany, including the Amish, the Mennonites, and the Moravians, and then, of course, there were many, many Quakers. The toleration in Pennsylvania also allowed for freedom of speech, which spurred on a huge publishing industry in Philadelphia. This became the center for publishing and the intellectual center of the New World. Through immigration, Pennsylvania became the most populous of the colonies, with over 300,000 residents, and Philadelphia the largest city, with over 18,000 people. Despite Pennsylvania's huge success, William Penn never realized any money himself because of his poor management. But he was a man of the spirit, not of business, and he really does deserve to be considered among America's founding fathers. 
While the Puritan ethic remains with us today, the imprint of tolerance and respect for human rights that is also characteristic of our nation comes to us from the middle colonies and from William Penn.